Ejecting parts from an injection mold. Welcome to a new episode. In part one of this series on making an injection mold for a customer, I had problems getting the part out of the mold. The, it was sticking. So I needed some way to get it out. The obvious way is to use ejector pins. I didn't have any pins the right size. So I decided to try something, which is to create an ejector bar, which is a bar that would go across uh, from one side to the other and allow me to use a screwdriver on e either side to pry the bar out. So that's what I'm doing in this episode. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the insert and then as you'll see I'll make a cavity for the insert and then mill out the correct shape of the mold in the insert. So let's head to the machine and I'll show you how I did it. The first step is to remove most of the material. This is using a 3 inch end mill and you can see it's making some nice large chips. I left uh, 10 thousandths of material on the top flat surfaces, so this is using a 1 8 inch flat end mill to remove that and get it down to correct dimensions. This is using a 1 8 inch ball end mill at 30,000 RPM to mill most of the slope sides so that it'll be smooth. And then switching to a 1 8 inch flat end mill to clean up the sections that I couldn't get with the ball end mill near the, the bottoms. That looks very nice. And it's uh, very smooth. I don't feel any uh, lines with my finger. So this is the uh, insert that hopefully will be the ejector bar. Next thing I need to do is take the mold and uh, cut a slot for this. After I tapped these holes, what I discovered is that these holes were not really deep enough for the tap that I was using. I don't have a bottoming tap. So I ended up stripping one of these with the tap, which is pretty bad. And so I decided to redesign the part and move these screws out to the point where I could drill them all the way through and tap them all the way through. And I have this piece of half inch thick material I uh, milled out, I mean that I cut off that is a little bit more than half an inch tall. But what I want to do is I want to make sure that these, uh, the top and bottom are square. I uh, probably don't really need to because I'm just going to mill this off and then uh, uh, flip it over. But you know what, well, you know that I say that, I think I'm just going to put this in here and uh, mill it without uh, making it flat first. First I set the X0, Y0 to the back left corner. And then as I mentioned, because I decided not to flatten the top, I decided to just set the Z0 to any place on the top. I put the mold back in and I'm now about to mill the pocket for the ejector mechanism. So I'll just go ahead and select the program which is the ejector slot, select program, and here we go. Now, of course, this could go wrong, this could not work, but it's pretty easy to make a new version of the mold because I've got everything programmed already, so it's just a matter of cutting off another piece of metal and then uh, machine time. And uh, the machine with the tool changer makes that really easy. Now one thing I'm noticing is I did not use rest machining, so it's doing some air machining where there are already pockets. But again, you know, this is uh, a hobby, so and uh, these are injection molds, so how long it takes to make a mold is not really that big of an issue. This is using a 1 8 inch end mill running at 15,000 RPM and uh, 30 inches a minute for the, uh, the feed. Here's the result, uh, and here's the, the other part. 
and you can see that they fit together really nicely. Uh, there's no wiggle at all in either direction, so that's exactly what I wanted. Now I just have to drill the two holes to the back that will screw into here and hold it in place while I mill it out again. I drilled the holes all the way through and then tapped them and then put two screws into the back to hold this into position. I'm not sure how... It sounds pretty good. So I'm not sure how uh, strong this is, so how rigid this is. So what I did is I set the programming to cut this to be <clears throat> much less aggressive and we'll see how that works. So I'll go ahead and uh, put this in here, clamp it in place and uh, then we'll see how it works. Hi, right, that's looking good. So I'm taking this uh, with lighter passes than I could, but I want it to be conservative. What I'm hearing though makes it sound like it's uh, plenty strong, uh, plenty rigid. I'm not hearing any chatter, it's just sounding really good. This didn't work out quite the way I expected. I mean it actually worked out really well, but the part in here I must have moved in CAD since I made this cavity. So this didn't line up right here. Uh, but I'm still going to test it to see how it works. The other thing I'm noticing is this is uh, producing what's going to be a sharp edge here. That may be okay. What I'm going to do for now is just uh, clean this up with a file a little bit or sandpaper. Actually I'll use sandpaper. Anyway, let's um, take the screws out and uh, see what it's like. And as you can see, this comes out quite easily and then goes back in and it's, I think, going to work out pretty well. But what I need to do is take it to the, the injection molding machine and actually give it a try and see how it turns out in the machine. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, we don't have quite a full shot. Um, when I first start up, uh, the plastic is, is usually a little hotter because I've let it sit for a while. Uh, so I turn the pressure down just to make sure, but let's see how it works. Okay, looks like it's gonna work just fine. Uh, again, it's not quite shaped correctly because the, uh, the mold is not correct. Let's take a look at the way that I milled the cavity. You can see that I have the zero point in the back left away from here. But if we look at how I milled the insert, you can see that I moved the zero point to here. And that was not my reference point. So it's not surprising that the insert milling did not line up with the cavity. Off camera, I remade this mold but I used the same insert that I had before. And as you can see, it's a perfect match now. There's, there's no seam that I can feel on the bottom here, and there's no seam on the top. So this is, should be perfect, and I'm going to take the screws out now and see if it returns to that same exact position. When I put the screws in, I made sure that it, these screws were tight so that I wouldn't get chat, uh, I wouldn't get uh, chatter from the mill. You know, I wanted this to be a rigid setup. Okay, so now um, it did spring back a little bit, but when the two mold halves close, uh, it should uh, produce basically no parting line. So we'll see how that works out. Next step is to put this in the injection molding machine and, and give it a try. Okay, make sure I put this in correctly, in the correct orientation. And let's give it a try.
And there you have it. Pretty close to a perfect part. It's not quite perfect. You see this, uh, you can see this white edge around the part here. This tells me that um, I didn't have it closed all the way. So I'm going to increase the uh, clamping force a little bit and probably decrease the injection pressure a little bit and then give it a try again. There's still a little bit of that, but um, and uh, tiny. You can see the parting line here, and I can feel it with my fingernail. But uh, for this application, it should be fine. Now I can fix that. I have a pretty good idea of how to fix that. Uh, I need to add a little bit of slop in the part um, because you know my tolerances were probably a little bit too tight, and so this doesn't actually get pushed down all the way. Uh, when I clamp the part, and that's probably actually what's causing this as well. So what I probably need to do is, uh, actually what I'll probably do is screw this back into place, but not tighten it so much so that it's still I can still feel this, and basically remill this, and that should take care of it. But in any event, this is good enough for me to move on to the next mold and then uh, send this to the customer, and then I can fix the mold later. As you see, that uh, turned out really well. It's a lot easier to get the part out of the mold. It's actually quite easy to get the part out of the mold. There are some things I'm not completely happy with that I will probably fix after I finish the, the video. But the good news is that it allows me to make parts that meet the customer's need. And now I can move on to the next mold. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.